God is love? All the time. All the time. Amen. Uh, good morning and welcome to uh, Groveport Zion Lutheran Church on this, the second Sunday in Advent. Will any visitors please sign the um, guest register in the back of the church before you leave today if you've not already done so? Uh, also, members, there will be a congregational meeting immediately following the service today to vote for uh, new council members and to approve the proposed 2024 church budget. So please stay for that, to, to be a participant in that. Um, I also want to make a note, if you have already had the chance to, to look through the bulletin, you'll notice the canonical was not there. And uh, Friday I was chastising our, our um, church secretary for leaving it out, and she politely reminded me that the canonical was not sung during the season of Advent, said the Methodist to the Lutheran. So. <laughs> if there's no other announcements, uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive God's word followed by the lighting of the Advent candle as, as we listen to the prelude. Good morning and welcome on this second Sunday in Advent. I welcome Jim to come forward as we light our second candle, the candle of peace. God is the Prince of Peace. 
And as we have come into worship this morning and light the candle of peace, we are reminded that God's presence is the peace that we need to live out our faith in this world that needs Jesus, that needs the advent of our Lord. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, who gives us courage to start again. You fasten righteousness around your waist and baptize with the Holy Spirit's fire. Bless us as we mirror your mighty fire in these simple flames. And teach us to mirror your justice in the paths we prepare. We ask that peace abound until none hurt or destroy over all the earth. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are willing and able for a brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And therefore, let us take a moment of silence to confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word, it saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By His coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The first reading this morning for the second Sunday in Advent is taken from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower in the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Says the city of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Let's, let us read Psalm 85 responsibly. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Will you speak peace to your people and to those who turn their hearts to you? Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its benefits. The second reading is from Second Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought we to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance, but in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is all at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Israel went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Now John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Advent blessings on week two as we continue in our journey of preparing our hearts and our minds for the coming Messiah. This is indeed one of my favorite times of the year for many reasons, not the least of which is the Advent season is holy in and of itself. The holy child leaves heaven and comes to earth so that no matter what we experience in this broken life, we can have the assurance that our God, who's holy in all of His ways, Our God, who fully brings us into faith through the waters of the holy baptism. Our God, who feeds us with His body and His blood in the presence of Christ as we live out our pilgrimage, is the God who makes us holy. Don't know where you are on your journey. This is a very difficult season of the year for many people. They think about and reflect upon the many blessings of God in their life. And perhaps this year is a new year. There's the beginning of the church calendar year, and I I think about this as well, the new church calendar year, Advent, the Adventus, the coming of the Lord. There are new ways in which the Spirit of God is bringing life into His church, and maybe this year for you, Christmas will be different. The Advent season will be different. But nonetheless, God is still good and His sovereign grace rules over your heart and your mind so that if this is indeed a difficult season for you, you can hear the good news of Jesus Christ tell you, you are not alone. For the Holy of Holies has come for you. This is a holy, a reverential season in which we prepare our hearts and our minds for the coming of Christ. And we see today in our lesson a prophet whose role and task is to point to the coming of the Messiah, this good news that has come for all people, that anyone who repents of their sins and turns from their wicked ways and turns back to the God and giver of all things, the God and giver of life, will live, will be forgiven, will have salvation and freedom. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we live out our pilgrimage in this life, Not living for the here and now, but rather living for the life that is to come. On the eschaton, that day when Jesus Christ will come back as He said He would. To judge the sheep from the goat, the righteous from the unrighteous. He will come back as we confess in the creeds. And this is a holy season in which we ask God to prepare us for His coming. To prepare us for His coming. So if you have... Your Bible or your bulletin, you can follow along with me. We're going to be in Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to begin with the good news. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for Him. Now I think it's interesting as we reflect for a few moments on the Gospel of Mark, this is the earliest Gospel that we have written for us. All the other Gospel writers are reflecting, for example, on what Mark has said about the Gospel written maybe 50, 60 A.D., the first gospel that's written, and we hear from the very beginning of Mark's gospel this declaration, this proclamation of the good news. In the Greek, it's called euangelion. E-U-A-N-G-L-I-O-N. Euangelion, which means the good news of God's tidings of His kingdom that has come and will come again. 
When we talk about the good news, as Mark opens up his gospel with the good news, the euangelion, we have to first be reminded that this is nothing new. This is the beginning of Mark's gospel. He opens up with the good news, the euangelion of Christ. And what is the good news? What is the good news of God? We talk about the gospel. We receive the gospel. We have readings of the gospel every week. But what is the good news? Emmanuel, God who is with us. God left heaven became a sinner for us, even though He was without sin. He became sin so that we might be the children of God. What is the good news? The good news of Jesus is that God became mercy for us. And we see this all over the Old Testament Scriptures, going all the way back to the very first book in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 3. We hear the euangelion, so clear when the Lord is speaking to the serpent in verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock, all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, verse 15, between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Here is the first declaration of the good news. The euangelion, that God's Messiah is coming. From the very beginning of time, the scriptures declared that there is a Messiah coming. And there is a Christ who becomes flesh, who is Emmanuel, who becomes mercy for us so that we can stand before God on that day of judgment, on the advent coming of the Lord. And we can say, Father, ripe around me your righteousness, for I am only holy because of you. You see, we hear once again the euogelion through the prophetic voice of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 40 saying this, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. In other words, make room in your heart for the euogelion. Yes, there's discouraging news all around us. Yes, our bodies are constantly changing. Yes, our life situations are constantly in flux. Yes, I know there's fear in your heart for that forthcoming doctor's appointment. But there is good news. There is good news. The euangelion tells us that God in Christ has come for us. So that no matter what we experience in this broken world, we can be assured of the coming of God for us. Us. The prophetic voice is clear. Prepare the way for the Eungelion. We also hear in Micah chapter 5, written in the 8th century BC and then rewritten after the Babylonian exile in around 6 BC. He says this, Marshal your troops now, city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites." He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. From the very beginning of Mark's gospel, we hear the good news. Everything in the Old Testament is pointing now to this Christ who's prophesied to come. The season is holy because God prepares us to receive Christ. This is not a work that we do. Rather, this is a work that God does in the waters of baptism. Verse 4, Mark chapter 1, verse 4. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. You see, this work of baptism 
This work of baptism is God's work in our lives to bring in the messianic kingdom into the reality of incarnational well-being whereby we live our life for the rest of our pilgrimage out to the fullness of God's kingdom that has already come and will come when Christ comes back to judge the living and the dead. We live in between these two times. As Lutherans, we are amillennialists, which means that the God in Christ has come, this kingdom of good news has come, and we live out the promise of His coming. We don't know the day or the hour, but the call of Christ is Advent. Adventus is to prepare the coming of the Lord. You Ungelion, good tidings of great joy for those who rejoice that this kingdom has come. We rejoice. The good news is something in which we rejoice because God has done the work of no man. One of the most humbling acts of mercy in my life as a pastor is to baptize God's children. I haven't done a baptism in a while, but man, I am praying for the Lord to just week after week have baptisms. New lives, adults, children. They just come, the whole household. Maybe it's the son or the daughter who hears the good news of Jesus Christ, the Yul and and they go home and tell mom and dad and they want to be baptized and the whole household is baptized. I saw it in my first church and I'm believing this. Whole households. You see, this is the gift of God for you. This is the gift of faith. This is the gift of rejoicing this Advent that the sacrament of baptism is what John is saying. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. This is how we do it. We don't prepare ourselves by doing something for ourselves. We prepare ourselves by confessing our sins. Listen to what he says. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John goes on to confess, I baptize you with water, but He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We are preparing ourselves for the Messiah who is coming. But when this Jesus comes, He will baptize you in the Trinitarian name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit meaning the Anointed One, the seal of ownership in our lives, the One who comes to us in the font and says, Your sins are forgiven, and now live out the anointing of My Kingdom in your life, here and now, and in the days to come. Here and now. This is God's work. This is God's work. Have you been baptized? Many of us have been baptized in the Maybe some of us who have been your sins before the Lord who knows your sins who will give you life who will give you peace and gives you salvation this is the work of God and we don't do anything but come just come I am praying for that day that households come to faith in Jesus right here at Brook Brook Zion Church I'm praying for that day. that's the gift of God that's what John is pointing to. And I could only imagine the kind of upheaval John was producing. He's out in the wilderness. He's some crazy guy, wild hair. He has a leather belt around his waist, which is depicting a prophet in his day. It would be very common for, for a prophet to have a leather belt that would specifically identify him as a prophet. He's eating wild honey and locusts. He's out there crazy. He's not in the temple doing the baptizing. You see, this is the thing. We've got to get out of the temple. We're in the temple. Yes, we've got to be here. We need to receive from Christ. We need to hear the word of the Lord. Law and gospel. But then we've got to go into the wilderness. They're not in here. They're out there. We have to go to them. Advent is a time in which we call in the harvest. If you have never come to saving grace in Jesus, this is the time to confess your sins and to live a life of holiness before the Lord. This is the preparation season. Tomorrow is not granted to you. Today is the gift. And so what does a prophet do? This is God's work. God's work is the gift. What is our work? Our work is to point. 
to point to this great gift. Verse 7, And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy, not worthy, to stoop down and untie. The voice of a prophet, as Martin Luther said, has a long, skinny, bony finger and points to the one who forgives sins, points to the one who gives us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. And I am here before you this morning as one who continues in this process of living out my pilgrimage of discipleship. I have not arrived. I'm simply taking my little small bony finger and I'm pointing to the God who has redeemed my life. I'm pointing to the Christ who is putting me back together again. I am pointing you to the good news that you engage on that God has come for all people. I am simply pointing you as any prophet will to the good news found in Jesus. And our job, your job and my job is to point others. To go out into the wilderness. To go out of the norm. It's okay to be a little different. Different is good. But we have to meet them in life where they are, not where we want them to be. That's our work, is to point. And I'm going to give you three simple ways as I close this morning's sermon. Three simple, practical ways that you can point to the coming Messiah this Advent. Simple, practical. First, make it a habit that your boasting is only done in Christ. Make it a habit, a part of your lifestyle, if you will, that your only boasting is in Christ. There's a lot of things in which we can boast. We can boast in our credentials. We can boast in our family lineage. We can boast in our job. We can boast in our monies and the retirement account. We can boast in our reputation. We can boast in our house, the size of car, the faster it goes. We can boast in all these kinds of worldly things. But if you want to point to Jesus... Better than anything else, you will say like Paul, I am nothing, but the power of the gospel has overcome my weaknesses. I'm going to boast all the more in the powerful, redeeming, anointing work of God that takes me in my brokenness and picks me back up and sends me out with the message of hope for somebody who has yet to believe. If you want to be a prophet, that's the way to do it. You point to Jesus and say, look at my life. I'm messed up. I'm a sinner. God has put me back together again. And there's hope for you. That's all you have to do. Make it a habit, a lifestyle to only boast in Christ. I could flaunt you with my credentials. I will not. I don't know anything except for the power of the gospel that raises the dead to new life. Number two, you want to use your little pointy finger to point others to Christ this Advent? Another simple way. Leverage every opportunity. Every opportunity to introduce somebody else to Jesus. You know, you just don't go to Walmart to get your things at Walmart. I shared last week... When I was in a predicament getting coffee, I went over there and Terry said, Oh, you know, we have a Kroger over there and get your coffee creamer. And there was a lady over there that God had ordained that moment. You see, we just don't go into work, check in and check out. I know you've got a time card. I know there's things you have to do. I know there's things that the things of this life says what you can do and what you can't do. But you can live a life that's worthy of the calling of God over you. You don't even have to say anything. Just be different. Love different. Love never fails. If you want to point people to Christ, the second way, very practical way, is simply maximize every opportunity to introduce somebody to Jesus. And number three, very practical in our church, join a serve team. We are being diligent in our discipleship mindset, in our task force, to be certain that we have opportunities for you to serve. 
If you do not have an opportunity in God's church to serve, you will not grow as a disciple of Christ. We want you to believe and belong and become. And we become all that God wants us to be as we, like Jesus, adopt His attitude and His mindset. Jesus did not come to be served, but He came to serve and to offer His life for the ransom of many. If you do not have a place to serve in God's church, I encourage you, find a place to serve. It doesn't have to be on leadership. I'm not talking about leadership council, even though that is a wonderful way to serve. The Discipleship Task Force, wonderful way to serve. There's a hospitality team being formed. And other teams, as we hear the voice of the Spirit of God as we move forward, we need to provide an opportunity for you to serve. If you come in and come out, that's only part of the discipleship process, to belong. We want you to belong. We want you to believe what Jesus Christ said, who you are, who He is, and we do that by living life in community. Join a serve team. Simple as that. If you're not serving, you're not growing. Did you hear that? If you're not serving, you're not growing. Because He is Jesus. Servant of all servants. Three simple steps. So Lord, come. Teach us how to apply this message. We cannot do the work. All we can do is point to you. The Christ, the Lord, the Messiah. Prepare us, Lord. I pray for that family, maybe even that individual who is here maybe today or they're watching online this service later. They've never been baptized into Christ Jesus and they are sensing the urgency of that call. Lord, bring them here. Bring in the harvest. Bring in families. Bring in children. Bring in the lost. Bring in the broken. Bring in the depressed. Bring in the criminals. Bring in the lives of those who are walking far from you that we may rejoice that the good news of Christ, the Eungelion, sets the captives free. That is our prayer. And use us to point to this great work, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, we long for your salvation. Make haste and help us. Come quickly with blessing and comfort for your people. O oh, strong deliverer of Israel and the redeemer of the world, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prepare your church for the coming of your Son. From valleys of lukewarm worship and half-hearted service, raise it to heights of praise and love. Level mountains of false teaching and self-importance. Lead, lead it along level pathways of faithfulness and humility, so that many come to faith in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prepare the people of this congregation for the coming of our Savior. Help us to lift up the humble, bring low our self-centered ways, and make level paths for leading people to Jesus. Bless everyone learning discipleship, discerning a call to ministry, or teaching and mentoring the faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We offer to you our tithes and offerings and all that is yours. Use them to bring glory to your holy name and to expand the Father's love throughout the world. We pray for Pastor McGee, leadership council and staff, call committee deacons and trustees, discipleship task force, ministry serve teams, Bishop Dan Selbo in the NALC, and all persons whom you have called to make disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prepare the world for the coming of its king. Equip our earthly leaders to raise their eyes beyond all that divides and discourages us, and to the saving truth of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, bestow your healing upon all who suffer in body, soul, or spirit. We name them before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord Jesus, bestow your healing upon all who suffer in body or soul or spirit. I'm sorry. And finally, Heavenly Father, we are remembering before you those whom you have called to their eternal resting place. Grant them the gift of eternal, and sal eternal life and salvation in your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer, for into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue our service of worship by sharing God's peace. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him some praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to You, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted Your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom You will also make all things new in the day when He comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering therefore His salutary command, His life-giving passion and death, His glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of His coming again, we give thanks to You, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask You to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with Your Word and Holy Spirit to bless us, Your servants, and these Your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sins, may be formed to live as your holy, called, and chosen people, and given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, power, and, and the, the glory, glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and the ushers will lead you forward.
Please stand as you are willing for the post-communion blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a quick reminder about our congregational meeting to follow our worship. Please stay around. Love to have you stay for that. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God.